Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2014 film, The Editor. And when I'm doing this review and when I watch the film, it's available on the Shutter streaming service. So hopefully it's still there when I put this up. Now, Shutter had added recently a ton of Giallo films. So I'm glad that they ended up adding The Editor along with it. I had not seen that. I had not seen a lot of the Giallo that they put on, up there. So the editor is not really for everyone. It is mainly for people who have seen Giallo or understand Giallo. Uh, best for people who have seen a lot of Giallo. Now, I am thankful that I saw a big chunk of Giallo before seeing this film because I probably would just be like, what, when I saw this film. Uh, but you need that base knowledge of what Giallo is, a lot of the tropes that are at play within Giallo films. Uh, and then you'll be able to appreciate it more because it's basically a film that makes fun of G the Giallo subgenre by uh, by paying homage to it at the same time. So it's it's very intricate uh, when it comes to comparisons to Giallo. And if you don't have a base knowledge of Giallo, you'd just be like, what is this frantic, weird film? So I'm glad I saw a large chunk, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I missed even with it. So I will cite some specific other Giallo films that I've seen that I see comparisons to or scenes taken directly from in some instances for this film, but I'm probably going to miss plenty because I haven't seen every Giallo. And I think it's a situation where when I see more Giallo, I might want to go back and rewatch this film again to catch more stuff. So yeah, anyway, so the editor, uh, 2014, directed by Adam Brooks and Matthew Kennedy, uh, known as Astron 6, uh, they did the film Father's Day, which by the way, there is a reference to the film Father's Day in this movie. Uh, there's a part where the inspector is in the church and he's reading a newspaper and the headline on the, on the newspaper says, uh, man or local father raped and burned. And that is a reference to the film Father's Day, which I have not seen, but I've heard very good things about. And I do plan to watch it at some point. Um, so the it was written by Brooks Kennedy and also Connor Sweeney, who also, you know, they all did the script for Father's Day as well. Posters for this film were actually created by Graham Humphreys, who's a very big name within the film poster community. He's uh, just for a few examples. He's done posters for Nightmare on Elm Street as well as The Evil Dead, so obviously very big ones. Ray and Josephine's apartment within this film um, was above an active funeral home and crematorium in Ontario. Yes, this film was filmed in Canada, and I thought that was a little interesting tidbit. Also, at one point, there is a book that's found, I believe by the inspector, that says the three mothers on the front. Now that is paying homage to Dario Argento, who obviously has done a lot of giallo, but the three mothers is not giallo. And that's one of the things I've also seen other references to non giallo films in this that I'll also talk about here and there. But most of the references are giallo because it's a giallo film making fun of giallo and paying homage to giallo. Uh, but it expands upon that and it hits some other just Italian films, much like the Three Mothers trilogy by Dario Argento. Uh, definitely has a giallo feel in the beginning of the film with the start. Uh, the music is very, very giallo, which, by the way, is one of my favorite things about this film. The soundtrack is awesome. It is engaging. It is fun. It is upbeat, downbeat, scary fun it's it's all over the place and it is awesome and it fits giallo very well so i love the soundtrack with this uh, slow motion in the very beginning with the creepy guys watching a partially naked woman dance uh very giallo there's actually one specific giallo film i know i've seen a scene in a giallo film that's very much like the opening of this but i can't remember specifically which one i think it might be the case of the bloody iris but I'm not 100% on that, so I know I've seen it, though. If someone knows, you can put a comment down in the, in the comments. Uh, but also, they, the, the font that they use for the opening credits, that it looks 100% Giallo. A lot of that font was used in Giallo films for the opening credits and the closing credits, so I think it's a nice little touch that they put that in there. The reveal of the intro of this film actually being a film that the editor himself, CISO, is working on, I thought was a cool reveal, but it also reminded me of the film A Blade in the Dark. 
because in that one, it starts that way. It is, you think the events of the actual film, and then you find out it's actually a film that's being worked on, and the guy who's working on the film is actually doing the soundtrack, not doing the editing, but it, it I guarantee it was kind of taken from A Blade in the Dark to a degree. Uh, also, the killer in the film uh, with, you know, very overboard using a, a tarantula on the on the woman and then also a hatchet to bash her head in. Uh, the tarantula portion really reminded me of Black Belly of the Tarantula, and it gets used a few times within the film, so I think it's a reference to that. Uh, the color use uh, initially in this, I think, is very much a nod to Dario Argento, especially with the uses of, like, blues and pinks and purples. Uh, very Argento, he did that a lot, and very early on they, they used that cool color usage. So, very giallo. The use of the killer whispering is totally right on with Giallo. Obviously, that's in the film that's being worked on, um, but that's such a Giallo thing. Lots and lots of whispering to cover up the voice of the killers in these films, so I like that they use that. The over-the-top nature of guys being self-absorbed and the women being kind of simple and mainly being there as kind of like sex objects uh, is very typical Giallo thing, unfortunately. Uh, it wasn't a very progressive time when a lot of Giallo was made, and they, you know, kind of make a good point of that with this film, because having come out in 2014, it just seems ridiculous how the characters are built, and it's pretty true to Giallo, though. Like, that's how these characters were built. They're, they're quirky. There's not a lot to them as actual human beings. Their dialogue is weird, frantic, kind of like choppy, especially because it's usually dubbed over, which they did do the dubbing over that sounds very much like the way it was dubbed over in Giallo. Sometimes you see the mouth moving and it's not matching up with the dubbing. That's very common. That was a thing. So a lot, a lot of attention to detail with getting it right in the feel of how these Giallos were and you know, structure of the story as well. That's another aspect to it. Uh, like I said, the frantic nature of the dialogue and the dubbing. It's, a, it's spot on. It is spot on. And also how odd the conversations get at certain points. That's another, you know, calling card of Giallo. There's a lot of weird conversation turns that happen. And I don't know if it's a lot of the time because of the translation of going from like an Italian to English. I don't know. But uh, they nail it in this film with, with having those same weird turns of conversation. The inspector, uh, I forget what his, uh, his name was in this one. Peter was his first name. Uh, but the inspector messing around and being blasé about the seriousness of the initial crime scene, uh, it's played a little bit more exaggerated than it normally would in the film, but I think that's just done for a humor uh aspect to add to it which you know they kind of do things a little more over the top than normal giallo for a more humorous reaction which i think works a lot of the times uh but it's actually not too far off with the way he's acting a lot of these giallo films you have the kind of bumbling idiotic type police officers or overly confident and not nearly as concerned as they should be about solving an actual murder so i found that funny that they had their main inspector character like that. Uh, the effect that they use that's within the film that's being worked on of the woman's face being pulled off, I thought it was really funny, but it also looked really good. I was very, very happy with that. Uh, it was a nice, you know, practical effects and gore moment. So I always am looking for the, those. And another one, actually, uh, Cesari, the guy who was in the um, shower, when he's stepping out of the shower because he was hearing a noise and he gets just like stabbed in the throat, the amount of blood over the top, great, loved it. The only thing that I that I think they could have done as another little detail that I would have appreciated with this is if they made the blood in the film look like the kind of paint red blood that Argento used a lot and some of the other people who made Ita or, uh, Italian giallo films back in like the 60s, 70s, mainly in the 70s, and a little bit into the 80s. So. Uh, the cutting between real life and the film that's being worked on without any sort of like visual or auditory cues or anything like that, I think is a good way to kind of keep the audience confused, but also it kind of mirrors how CISO himself is 
and he even says this at some point in the film, that he's losing it. Like, you can see that he's starting to have a mesh of, like, what's the film, what's real life? And the audience kind of gets a little bit of that feeling because we're getting confused as we're watching it. Like, you don't know if it's a segment of the film until they go back to real life and you're like, oh, that was a segment of the film. So it gets kind of confusing, but I think it's appropriate for for what the film is and, and you know, feeling also what CISO is feeling. So I like that aspect. The abusive sex scene in the rain between... Oh, I forget the one character's name... Um, the the blonde woman and the inspector when that whole scene it's konitz's konitz yeah his the blonde guy his his woman uh had had sex with the inspector and they talk about it while they're at the car i think that was a really funny scene because how blase they are about it they're just like oh yeah we've we've had sex before like we've been together and then they do that flashback where it's like this abusive like slapping around in the rain weird sex scene that is taken directly from the film the strange vice of mrs ward that's in the beginning of the film it's really weird and i think it's funny that they basically lifted it from that film and put it into this it seems over the top and weird but it's not that far from what the actual scene is in the original film which is kind of funny to me so i like that they put that in I like that the movie CISO is working on is called The Cat with the Velvet Blade because this sounds like it actually could have been a title of a real Giallo film. All these films have these elaborate, long, weird titles, but I find them fun. They're so, so much fun. My wife ends up hearing these as I've been buying Blu-rays and she's just like, these titles are so wacky. I'm like, yeah, but, uh, you know, that's part of the fun of it. The Inspector's Lady Marguerite uh, because of being blind and having that seeing eye dog and the way she looks, I believe that she is supposed to be a nod to uh, one of the characters in the film The Beyond by Lucio Fulci, which is not Giallo, but obviously Fulci did some Giallo, what I'm aware that he did. The New York Ripper, which I'll, there's also a scene I'll talk about in here lifted from The New York Ripper, and also um, A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, which I have not seen yet, but I bought, so yeah. Um, the scene of Giancarlo finding the inspector after he killed his wife, I think is particularly funny where the, the, uh, Giancarlo's just like, oh my gosh, I need to, you know, he, he, he gets stopped in his tracks by the inspector because he confuses him so much with like, oh my God, he was here. I saw him. It wasn't me. Hold this. Oh no. Now your prints are on the, on the ax. Now they're going to think it was you. Like how fast it moves, but how funny and witty the, the, the actions are and the dialogue i really love that scene i think that might be my favorite scene in the film really really good especially from a comedic perspective i like how they make every character odd aggressive and extremely capable of murder because that's one of those ways like a lot of giallo does to have a ton of red herrings everyone almost becomes a potential suspect for who is the killer so i like how they keep with tradition there the chainsaw kill is good and gnarly and fun and funny so i really like that that was another one of my favorite scenes that was the one where uh the couple was having sex and then the woman while she's riding the guy gets chainsawed from behind on her um shoulder looked really good and how the blood's just like like buckets of blood just like raining down on the guy too funny uh, I like the inspector playing fetch with his dog. Okay, so this one where he plays fetch, he goes into like some bushes or some brush, and then the dog comes back with the severed hand with the fingers missing. That is lifted directly from Lucio Fulci's uh, The New York Ripper. Uh, very memorable beginning to that film, because that, I mean, that is it. But um, I thought that was funny that they lifted that directly pretty much from that film. I like it. I could do without the trippy CISO in his own head scenes. I wasn't a big fan of that. I thought they were kind of boring and excessive. So if there's one big criticism I had or something that I would change or cut out, it would be that. I think you could just cut those out because you don't really need it. Um, and that kind of speaks to one of the other things is sometimes the film kind of drags a bit. And at a, just a little bit over an hour and a half, um, it kind of sucks when a film's kind of that that length and it feels like it drags from time to time so but overall still not not bad not bad at all 
As with most Giallo films, the killer was a person introduced in the beginning and barely in the film, but they're enough basically to make sense that they would be the killer. And when it's revealed who it is, um, Ciso's wife, then I forget her name. Was, was her name Josephine? I think she was Josephine. Um, when that's revealed, there's like this whole kind of like satanic ritual type thing tied into it of like her being a witch or something. I don't know. I think maybe that's partially a nod to a film like All the Colors of the Dark. Just thinking. I might be wrong, might be right, I don't know. F solid final twist to this film of the inspector being the editor himself, just because I didn't actually see that coming, and I always like that when I don't see it coming. Uh, it's ridiculous, but it kind of fits with the tone of the overall film, so it's kind of a fun way to end things and be like, oh, okay, that's what that's what's going on. Notice that they used yellow a quite a good amount in this film, which that happens in other Giallo films from time to time. It happened most, I think, in at least of what I've seen, the case of the Bloody Iris. There's yellow all over that, and that's obviously because it's a reference to the Giallo genre where or subgenre where it originated, which is these kind of like crime books that always had these yellow covers that ended up being called giallo and that's why it's called giallo for film because giallo means yellow in italian so all the use of yellow in the editor i appreciate it for that reason once again soundtrack killer love the soundtrack in this people unfamiliar with giallo may very well not like this film may not get much of anything out of it like i said if i had not seen a good chunk of giallo going into this i wouldn't have got a lot of what they were going for, a lot of the humor they were going for, a lot of the kind of parody that they were doing, it just right over the head. It, it, that's what would have happened. So I can't recommend this film for people who aren't familiar with Giallo or haven't seen. I mean, I would say <sighs> people who have seen at least five, you know, you'd probably be good. And especially if they're like core giallo films like if people have seen you know like the new york ripper or you know tenebrae deep red stuff like that like you you'd kind of get it but you kind of need to understand a little bit about the subgenre of giallo overall in order to like really appreciate this film and like i said you know once i see even more giallo films i think i might go back because i'll probably appreciate this film even more at that point and get more references so I think they did a solid job of making fun of the ridiculous nature of Giallo films, but still paying homage to it. And I feel like that's kind of a hard line to walk, of like making fun of something, but also being respectful and really being like kind of praising it at the same time. And like I said, you know, paying homage. So I think they walked a pretty, you know, tough line to walk, but they did it pretty well. So not a perfect film or anything, but I did enjoy it. Um, I, had, I had fun with it, especially being... Someone who's very nerdy about the Giallo subgenre, if you can't tell from my my uh, YouTube channel, uh, which, by the way, I have an entire playlist of Giallo film reviews up, which I think I have like 25 or something like that, and this will be added to it. So, But anyway, um, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid three and a half star rating. It's good. I enjoy it. Um, would love to hear what you have to say about it, though, so put some comments down there. Let's let's talk. You know, did you like this film? Did you not like it? Tell me why. And also, if you just want to talk Giallo in general, go ahead. Uh, also, if you could do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button, I would appreciate it very, very much. If you like any video I've ever done, this one or any other video, that's your best way to repay me. I'm not making money doing this or anything. I'm just trying to grow the channel, grow the community of nerdy horror people and that's what makes me feel good. So um, yeah, if you could do that, appreciate it. And also hit the notification bell button because then that way you'll know what I, uh, ugh, sorry, whenever I'm putting up new videos that are movie reviews or unboxings or anything else that I do. But regardless, I appreciate you taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.